Hello, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm JC. I have a message for you all today. Actually, it's an urgent message. And um, it's a message that I received in the middle of the night last week. You may be wondering why I've waited a week to give you an urgent message that I received from the Lord. And to be quite honest, I am... Um, I have to say that that is because of the spiritual warfare that I have been dealing with since then. Um, those of you who are on YouTube and sharing um, in the same capacity that I have been know how hard it is, but others that aren't, you know, whenever you've been called by the Lord to do something, um, know that it's scriptural that um, the enemy tries to oppress. And anytime you try to stand against the enemy, oftentimes he runs at you and um, does his best to try to throw you off course. And so I've just had to do a lot of praying this week. I've um, really sought the Lord and by his grace and glory and magnificence and love, he has spoken to me, he has reassured me, and he has put me back on track to speak to you all. And I believe that this is the message that he would have me start with. As I have told some of you before, um, I have been having dreams and I have some posts about those dreams. So far, I've been posting about the dreams that have been uplifting and encouraging, those that I believe the Lord has given me that show that rapture is imminent, but um, I have not been sharing the other dreams that I've been having that seem to suggest that we as a nation are in a time of judgment. And I believe that many of the dreams and the words that I've gotten from God have been a warning um, both to the church and to non-believers alike that um, if things don't change, you know, I believe that what we're seeing in the news and what has become our new normal in 2020 um, will continue and not only continue, but I believe will continue to get worse. So with that said, I just ask you if you are a prayer warrior, if prayer is your thing, um, if you have a mind to, to keep me in your prayers, and if you are needing prayer for any reason, um, feel free to leave a comment below. I would be happy to pray for you, and I look forward to hearing from any of you. Um, but anyway, on to this, this urgent message that I received. As I said, it was in the middle of the night, and it was about a week ago, and I had gotten up in the middle of the night to use the restroom, and as I was rounding the corner of the bed, I distinctly heard a voice inside of me say, get up and prepare for battle. Now, as soon as I thought that, I was just sort of taken aback by it, not because the Lord hasn't spoken to me before, but because the Lord has never spoken to me in a time like that, you know, and in that moment. I mean, I'm getting up, trying to get to the restroom so I could get back to bed so I can get rest. And so I have to admit that I was kind of like, you know, unsure about it, and I just, I kind of blew it off to be quite frank. I'm not proud of that fact, but I was tired, and I wanted to get back to bed, and I thought maybe that was just, I don't know, me. Um, so I laid back down, and I went back to sleep, and again, I was awakened with the same message um, to get up and prepare for battle. Exactly the same words, said exactly the same way, um, and that's when I knew this is not me. <laughs> I think I knew it the first time to be completely honest, but I think I was just trying to seek my own flesh and um, go back to sleep. But the Lord was making it clear that he wanted me to wake up. And so I did. I, I got up and I went downstairs and I just started praying to the Lord. And as a side message within this message because I want to talk more about that, you know, get up and prepare for battle, what I really believe the Lord was saying to me, what I really think he was saying to the church. Um, but before I do that, I want to tell you another little thing that kind of went hand in hand with it. I think that if I left this part out, I would be doing you a disservice. So 
As I've said, I've been having these dreams for quite some time. I haven't posted many of them and I plan on doing that. Um, but one of the dreams I've had has been specific to itself. It's sort of a type of dream that I have started referring to as being picked up by the spirit. Um, in one of my dreams, I, I literally believed that I was picked up and turned around and look, looked into the eyes of God. So just very powerful, very distinct characteristics of this dream being picked up and um, taken places, shown things, almost like I'm flying. So I had been telling my husband about these dreams for a while, and I always believed that he believed me. Um, but I had started praying to God that he would give my husband a dream just so he could understand, so he could see what I've seen. So when I'm speaking to him about the magnitude of these dreams and how they're not just like, it's so easy just to say it's just a dream, but these were not just dreams. And I wanted my husband to have that. So um, I had been praying. I'd probably prayed a couple of times. I don't really know. But I had prayed, I know distinctly one time I remember just specifically asking that of the Lord in silent prayer. And um, after I had finished my prayer, and it, I believe it was about three o'clock in the morning, I was just getting ready to go back upstairs and try to get some sleep. But my husband came out of the bedroom and he came down. Every hair on his arm was sticking up. And he was like, I just had a pick me up by the spirit dream. And I was just astonished. And he, of course, told me about this dream. Um, but I think what I really want to tell you about this is that when I had gotten up in the middle of the night and I was obedient to that voice of God telling me at a very untimely moment to get up and to seek him and to pray, that instantly something that I had prayed for, something that was important to me, happened okay and i don't think that's a coincidence i definitely think that you know that word was meant for me beyond that but i definitely think that the answer to a prayer that came directly following is no coincidence so with that said i want to talk about this message get up and prepare for battle what does that mean to me what does that mean to you i think honestly it means the same thing to me and the whole entire body of Christ that um, there's two meanings. I think that we're supposed to take it both figuratively and literally. Um, as I said, it was not um, ideal for me, the timing that the Lord chose to speak that to my heart, but he knew exactly what he was doing, okay? And so I think as I prayed about this and as the Lord has just poured in um, understanding and explanation, I think he is showing me that the enemy doesn't rest. You know, um, the enemy is at work when we are asleep because the enemy operates in darkness. And so it seems a little counterproductive, you know, when you think, well, I can pray in the daytime and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the Bible says for us to pray without ceasing, but I think what the Lord is showing me that if everybody in the body of Christ is just praying during the day and, you know, all sleeping at night, then there is a lot less, um, you know, intercession, just, I think, overall protection to the body during this time. It's sort of a vulnerable time for us, if you will. Um, the Lord brought to mind, to me, the battle of, um, that Jesus faced, his biggest physical earthly battle of his time on earth, um, and being, um, crucified and how he had taken his disciples with him. And in the moments before they came to get him, how frustrated he was that, you know, he was going up on the mountain. He was seeking the Father. He was in, in, in fervent prayer. And he, he wanted his disciples to stay up with him. More than one time, he rebuked them. Every time he would come back, they would have fallen asleep physically. 
And so I just, the Lord had just brought that to my mind and just, you know, kind of communicated the importance of, you know, going that extra mile, that time, the times that we're in, you know, require extra, extra prayer. You know, we don't have power ourselves, but the scripture tells us that we do have power in the name of Christ. We have power in prayer. And when more than one person agree in prayer, um, that power is multiplied in ways that we could never understand. So I just wanted to encourage the body um, through this word to think about, you know, setting your alarm clock. Think about times of the week, times when even if it's just once a week and even if it's just for an hour, during those first watch times to say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this because it's important. Pray about it. And ask the Lord if that's what he would have you to do. So in addition to a very literal translation of the message, get up and prepare for battle, I believe that we, the church, can look at it figuratively as well. I believe that it is a message sent to sort of suggest that we be aware of the times that we're in. Romans 13, 11 says, Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake up from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. Friends, when I think of this verse, it reminds me of almost the running jokes that people are making on Facebook about the year 2020. It has been nonstop. It has been one unforeseen thing after another the times and the seasons are speaking for themselves. And I know that most of the body, I, I believe if you're awake and if you're looking and you're watching and you're waiting for Christ's return, then you're seeing these things already. But I definitely think that there may be some people, um, Christians, believers, you know, and the lost alike that are looking at the TV and seeing these things that are happening day in, day out, the division that is in our country, the civil unrest, and thinking that this is just some weird 2020 fluke. And the truth is, I believe that that isn't true. I mean, I believe that the book of Revelation speaks about the, the end of the days and signs that we are in those times. And I believe the Lord has been speaking to me very powerfully um, since these dreams began and since she's been, he's been speaking these words to me that not only are we in those times, but we're nearing the end of those times. And so, you know, my, my, my word is encouraging to just seek the Lord, to seek his will, to spend as much time in prayer as possible, and to take comfort in the fact that while the enemy is real and he is trying to kill, steal, and destroy, as the scripture tells us, he always is. And during the end days, those attempts are going to be bolder and um, more potentially fear evoking for the body and non-believers alike. And I just encourage you to spend time in scripture, remind yourself of all the times that Jesus um, encouraged his people and spoke of these things to come so that when the time did come, and these realities are happening on earth, these terrible realities that we will not grow faint, that we will not just be devastated and lose hope like those who do not know him and like those who do not believe. So one final thing I wanted to share with you about this word, I was reading in the book of Isaiah this morning and the Lord put um, chapter nine, on my heart. I mean, it really, really, really stuck out. And I had prayed about whether or not I was supposed to share this with you because it's a hard message, but I believe that it's one of love. The truth of the matter is that throughout the Bible, judgment has happened. And if you read the Bible and if you study it, you see that the reason why that judgment happens is out of love. Because the cost of sin is death, y'all. And because the cost of sin, not only in a spiritual sense, is death, but also physical. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of destruction. There's a lot of things that God doesn't want his people to endure on earth that we have to endure 
because of the sin in our lives and because of our ways that we largely do not turn from unless he gets our attention in this way. And so um, I, I want to share with you Isaiah chapter 9, 19 through 21. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the land is scorched, and the people are like fuel for the fire. No one spares another. They slice meat on the right, but are still hungry, and they devour on the left, but are not satisfied. Each devours the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh devours Ephraim, and Ephraim devours Manasseh. Together they are against Judah. For all this his anger has not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. This scripture refers to a very specific time in Israel. Um, but scripture has a wonderful way of speaking to us in a timeless way. Um, we can see some of the characteristics and some of the things about this scripture and ways that it totally speaks of, you know, everything that we have been experiencing, you know, whether looking out your window or um, on TV, it talks about the land being scorched. Meanwhile, we've had fires raging through California, fire tornadoes that are super rare, dry lightning strikes. I don't even know how many different locations within California have been on fire or are still on fire right now. It says the people are like fuel for the fire. No one spares another. You've got rioting and more fire, more destruction, more um, evil, you know, just more um, aggression against one another. It says Manasseh devours Ephraim and Ephraim devours Manasseh. These are both tribes of Israel. They're the same people group, okay? They're God's children. They are loved by God, but they are killing each other. And it spoke to me about the racial unrest in our country. And it says that they devour each other, but together they are against Judah. The tribe of Judah is the tribe that our Lord and Savior Jesus descended from. And the fact that it says that they are against Judah, I just, it just speaks, it just spoke to me so powerfully that what is going on in our nation, we're not only fighting against each other, we're not only killing each other, but we are literally at war with, with God, with, with God's word. Um, we are against Judah. We are against the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everything that he came to this earth to speak of, it evolved around brotherly love and outdoing for one another and supporting and sacrificing in another's name. You know, it's not about your rights. You know, we're to sacrifice our fleshly desires and give those up for the good of another. Um, and so it just really, really struck me. And the final, the final verse, for all this, his anger has not turned away and his hand is stretched out still. I, as I said, I, I believe in a lot of ways that the things that we're seeing, you know, unless something changes, I believe it's just the beginning. And so that burdened my heart this morning, but the Lord did lift me up and he gave me another word that really spoke to me and it is Psalm 91. Now <clears throat> I've wrestled with whether or not I should just try to pick a few of these um, parts out of this chapter out for you and read that or if I should actually just read the whole thing. And because it is so comforting and because it's words just saying to my heart this morning and because I think that there's a chance that if you're watching it might uplift you and encourage you and honestly there's nothing that I can say that can be said better than scripture anyway so with that I'm hoping you will just entertain me and you will listen to the words of Psalm 91 
um, the, the subtitle says, My Refuge and My Fortress. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And you will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. And this is the Lord speaking. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So I just wanted to leave you with that today because it says everything. Okay, so in conclusion, I just want to again reiterate that friends, church, brothers and sisters, we are in a battle right now. It's a spiritual battle one that we have power and authority over in the name of Jesus. And the way that we activate that power is through prayer. And so I just encourage you today to pray, to pray like you never have before, to seek the Lord, to go into your secret place, to search for him and hear him and find him in his word. Ask him how you can be of service to him during these times. But also, friends, ask him how you can serve your family. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. There's so much that is unknown right now about our country and the direction that we're going. We've been getting warnings from the Lord. We don't know really what that means, but here's the deal. God does, and scripture tells us he goes before us, and he loves us, and if God is for us, Brothers and sisters, who can be against us? Friends, I hope this has been an encouragement to you, and I look forward to seeing you next time on my next video. But in the meantime, may the Lord bless you and guide you and fill you with his perfect grace overflowing.